Hey folks, welcome to Engineering Scale Models. I'm Jason, your host, and I do models. This is going to be part two of my uh, setting up a new breadboard at the top section here with a, um, with a clock circuit using a 5 for 5 timer, a clock pulse using a 5 5 5 timer, and then a uh, binary counter. And it comes in very handy for working with all logic. I already have one of these boards. All set up here um, with the different circuits on there and this was set up um, before uh, I've never made a video setting that up but um, I did a video before this check the playlist before this it's, it was about an hour long it was a little extreme I got a little crazy with the components I just my brain wasn't working I thought I had stuff I didn't have so and I was reading resistors wrong which is even sadder so we're going to move on here to the next um, mono stable version of the 555. But first, I'm not happy with the LEDs. Um, if I turn this on here, I have the right wires here. If I turn this on, if I turn this on, I'm not happy with that LED. I mean, I'll, it doesn't show any color or anything. So I'm going to try a different LED here. So I'm going to turn that off. And I got this bag of sample LEDs from Charjon. It's just a sample of the LEDs. I have red, um, UV, yellow, warm white. What is this here? This is that surface mount. That's for later. That's for later. Surface mount is yellow green. Surface mount put away. That's for the traffic lights. You're not supposed to see that yet. Not anywhere in the bag. So like I said, we got orange, green, warm white, pink. That's interesting. UV, yellow green, white. Yellow, red, and blue. All right, let's see which one of these looks best on camera. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a simple circuit here. I'm going to take a resistor. I'll take a 220 ohm resistor, which is red, red, brown, red, red, brown resistor. And I'm going to put it from ground, from ground, from positive to this spot here, 35. And then I'm going to take a ground jumper, which I need to grab out of here. real quick I did some prep work in before the video but um, apparently not enough okay so then I'll plug this in to this one next to it now that should give me a perfect scenario to light LEDs and see how they look on the camera. So a little experiment, we'll turn on the power supply and we'll start with the white one. We'll start with the white. So that's the white, well that is horrible on camera, so white, that's a no. Let's try the blue. See that looks white and washed out too. So pink. 
And this is a sample pack of these LEDs that you can get on Amazon for, I don't know, probably around $10. Oh, pink looks nice. That actually has, that actually looks like a color. What if I turn off this? Yeah, see that actually gives a nice pink. You can see that. If that's flashing, so we'll we'll put a pink as a maybe. And we'll look at an orange. Orange, you know that that looks orange has a blue. I don't know, it doesn't well, you can definitely tell it's orange. Put that in the maybe pile. Yellow. I don't want to use yellow, green, or red or blue because that's what I use the other LEDs for. So let's try this purple, this UV. These are my favorite LEDs. That's not bad. That's, you can definitely tell that's purple. It's not ferocious. So use a UV one. We got warm white. That's not too bad. That's very indicator lighty. Okay, so we're going to use this warm white one for the, the mono stable one. The next one we're building and we're going to put a UV one into where that where that um, where this one is we're going to put a UV one in there so So let me pull this stuff out. So how did I do that? So the positive's going that way, so I will bend that over there. And I will grab a piece of tubing. Just slide over that. Tuck it in there. There. It's not a bad indicator light. I like it. It's not over, overly bright and atrocious or anything. And we'll go ahead and we'll set this one up for the push button. And then we'll, in the next video, I'll do the program counter and the binary counter and we'll figure out what colors we'll use for that. I always like to bend with pliers because it's more accurate and less chance of damaging the wires. Speaking of stuff, I gotta get a video out today. This one won't go out today, but I gotta get one that I already have filmed out. So that will be that one there. Okay, let's talk about this next one. So this is going to be ran off a switch. And I have the top of the switch, and there's the switch. And we're going to put this one 
fairly close, right? Yeah, make it fairly close. So we have some room if we want to add another type of circuitry. Now I gotta tie stuff to ground, so I'll put the chip right there. Okay, so now I need positive and negative wires here. I already have a negative. So I'll bend this positive right here. So we'll plug in positive to pin one. And this one gets done just a smidge differently. The power in, in negative or power and ground are still plugged into the same ones, but it gets routed a little bit different. Okay, so I need a 10K resistor. So maybe I can find a 10. Well, I'm just going to use this 10K resistor right here. And I just cut them out of the little bandolier thing like that. These are uh, Ostor resistors. They come in a kit. Uh, you get 25 of each. They're well labeled. But they're not what I thought. They're the three band, but I thought they would have the thicker leads. And I like the ones with the thicker leads. So this side of the switch is going to positive. So we're going to pull this up. So this side of the switch. If that will fit. Crop it down. Resistors, resistors are so cheap I just most of the time Grab a new one and up. Okay, so that's pulled high. And then the other side is pulled low, so I need another. I have got to get better organized, guys. I'm sorry about this. out here. Ground the other side of the switch. So the switch is it's using a pull up resistor. So that's that in I believe from the switch. I'm not looking at a schematic, I'm looking at what I have built here. From the high side it goes to pin two. So I'm going to pin two. So, I am going to take how does that look to pin 2? That looks good. So I'm going to put a slight bend in it. Just so I can get it off the board. And then I'm going to Bend that down. Bend that down. Twist it around and pin to. There we go. We have a nice wire to pin to. I'm going to turn that off so I don't short it out. That was probably a bad idea. And then I need a 220 ohm resistor, which I have here, but I don't like the way that one's bent. I made a video of what I keep in my little box here, um, and it turned into a troubleshooting video, but good video nonetheless. So pin 3 is my output, where's my light, there we 
account. Okay, so that part's hooked up. Okay, now I need a capacitor. Oh, what is? Let me just take a look at this here. So this has a brown, yellow, black, black. One, this green. I'm going to have to measure this resistor because I hate the color codes and I don't want to get it wrong. So I'm going to just go to resistance on the meter. Flippy plugs on. Drop the resistor and not be able to find it. Okay, so what do we got here? Don't have the schematic at the moment. Yeah, that's a one meg resistor. I don't know why I'm using a one meg resistor there. I think I'm going to put a hundred K in that spot. <coughs> the one meg was a little extreme. So And 100K on 5 strip is brown, black, black, orange. Like I try not to use the five stripe ones and then I'm like I need to use them because um, it's going to positive I need to use them because I want to get rid of them so supposedly they're more accurate at 1% but it's resistance so that went to pin seven. So pin seven. And then, no, I totally didn't hook this up right. Hold on, guys. I hooked power indirectly into pin seven. So that's not correct. Power goes to pin 8, and then this goes to pin 7. Yeah, I thought I put that in there right. Okay, so then now I need a pin. Now I need a jumper to jump.
So these should be both 104. Yep, 104. So. Alright. So these both go to ground from pin 6 and pin 5. So. And I won't make this video the hour long the last one was. That decoupling capacitor there. No. This should work. Yep. I get a little pulse. See the light blink? There's an individual clock pulse. So, there we go. We have that, and we have that, and... The next thing is the um, button cap for my button here. So we have our two things. I hate these trim pots. So I'm actually going to try to put another type of trim pot in there and see if I don't get a better value. Alright, I'm going to call it here guys, thank you for watching, we'll set up the next part in the third and last part of this video series, visit me on social media at these links, you can also support me on Patreon, help me afford better tools and equipment and model kits and all that good stuff.